What's going on, y'all? So lit. So happy Memorial Day to everybody. I hope everyone is doing good. I hope y'all out there barbecuing, y'all being fucking safe. Okay, shout out to the memory of all the fallen soldiers who fought for us and all that goodness, you know, and to the families of the families of the families. Okay, we got that out the way. You know, I hope y'all really took in what today meant and not just to fucking barbecue, bitch. But okay, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, season 7, episode 11, I believe. Houston, we got a goddamn problem, okay? Bitch, we do got a fucking problem. We got a problem. All right, you know, we start off, and once again, I don't understand why, you know, Mimi need to be downgraded to just a guest of the show, okay? A friend of somebody's because she has no storyline. I don't understand why they introduced us to Ty, like she was going to bring her on and they was going to create some fake-ass lesbian dyke drama that ain't real, you know what I'm saying? And for one minute, it did happen and then it fizzled away like we didn't give two shits of a sense about it, okay? And so, you know, um, Sean, which he did something really, really cute. He had a little gender reveal party, um, get together of all, I guess they're close friends and family, whatever, because the only people that we really saw at the little thing was, um, people from the Love and Hip Hop cast, okay? And I'm talking about Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, the majority of them. I said, well, damn, where the rest of the people at? But I think she had like a baby shower or something like that, and I seen it on Instagram, and it was really, really cute and really, really nice. But anyway... You know, he had all the people there. Melissa brought her ass in there with her. I, girl, I said, Melissa, Melissa gives you, Melissa is a stem, okay? You no, know, she a soft stud, you know, stem, stud, whichever one you want to call her because she give you an, an androgyny tease a little bit. Bitch came up in there this time. You know, every time we see her, she got a new do, okay? She got a new look. She just go with the wind, I guess. You know, she came in there looking like, um, crisscross make you wanna jump, jump, and I will never lie again. I will never lie. You know she was singing that to me, uh, um, Mimi, okay? And for my youngest who don't know that, that's immature, okay? Immature, when Marcus Houston was young, before he started calling himself Batman, he had them little twigs in his head too, bitch. You know, y'all don't know, y'all don't know. Look the shit up on YouTube, okay? Um, I was like, what the fuck are we doing? Okay, what the fuck are we doing? Me, uh, why y'all bringing these people on this thing? Okay, Ty there. Of course, I knew she probably was gonna be there because it's basketball, and you know Jessica Dine come in. You know everybody figuring out that something's going on. We see the blue, we see the uh pink, and um you know Mimi is like, <clears throat> all this time I was wondering why. Jessica has been kind of MIA on a lot of things. And now I see when we have the blue and we have the pink. I used to do Mimi voice so good. You know, nowadays it's just like escape the fuck out of me. I'm kind of disappointed, but whatever. But, you know, Jessica Dime gets there. You know, she's showing, jocking them, talking to Sean. He telling them about it. They like, yo, you hit that club up? Yeah, I did. I did that shit, bruh. <laughs> I was like, all right, be proud of it. Claim your seed, bitch. Okay, that is, ain't nothing like a man claiming his child, okay? Ain't nothing fucking like it. When you got a whole bunch of deadbeats out here, bitch, you know, we shouldn't, it's a shame that we got to take pride in that because you would think a nigga would just go ahead and claim his shit, but they don't, not all the time. Um, but moving on from there, Jessica comes in with her mom, so it's good to see that her and her mom are still, you know, kicking it and working on their relationship. Later on, Jessica's dad comes in, Sean brought him down, which was, you know, really nice to see because she said that was, she's like a daddy's girl. He was her number one supporter. Um, he, Sean knows the gender of the baby already. And somebody used to, uh, say when they do the little gender reveals on the T, um, they show it on the shade room. Somebody always asks that, how is it that they don't know what the gender is? You do know that sometimes when they have these things, either one parent know or none of them know, they get the results and, you know, the friend or whoever it is, they take it down to wherever they want to and have them fix it up in a way so that no nobody would know, only the person who did it. You know what I'm saying? But it was cute. They threw the little basketball against the um, rim and it was a girl. So that was nice. 
moving on from that, we get this scene with Carly Red and Sean Garrett at the bowling alley. You know, she doing the absolute most, but that's Carly, so it's to be expected. They're about to go on this little double date, so they're waiting on Spice. Spice was supposed to bring her little dude. Carly said she's not going to um, dime stain because she didn't want nothing to stop to pop up or whatever because, you know, she knew Sierra and Tokyo was going to be there. And Tokyo and Sierra and her are not on the best of terms right about now, okay? My whole thing is I was trying to... Uh, Help my homegirl out. Confront my homegirl with the fucking bullshit that was going on in her relationship. I said, bitch, that's understandable, but warn the bitch first. That's the whole thing I'm getting at. And even Sierra in Tokyo wasn't here for the way that she did it and felt that it was being messy. And I said, well, bitch, y'all should know it's Carly, Carly Red. Nine out of ten, I don't truly believe that Carly did it on purpose, but she needed to think first of their reaction. And it's just like, girl... You knew what was going to happen, though. You can't tell me that you didn't know. And so when Spice get there, she there with Tobias. And Carly looking like, wait a minute, bitch. First of all, I thought you was with Tokyo. I mean, we on a break. We broken up. We not really. I'm playing the field. I'm this bitch. Are you broken up? I mean, it's just like, um, because, and, you know, what happened was I said, nigga, yes or fucking no. I would have looked at him crazy, Spice. Like, I would have let the motherfucker go. You know, you probably already got the dick already. So, girl, whatever. And so, you know, he said basically, yeah, they broken up for now. Uh, and I said, Spice, I'm not even mad at Spice for being with him because she don't know Tokyo. I don't know if we've seen a scene with them together. She don't know of her like that, uh, according to her. And, hey, he claimed that they was broken up. So, hey, it is what it is their game and i was like all right whatever fuck that so of course carly's sitting there talking about what happened and why hunt sierra and tokyo on the outs for right now and the whole thing with brosco mind you sierra talking about son sierra sat there in that auditorium trying to make it seem as if she wasn't falling for the bullshit that brosco was spitting okay like she did not let that motherfucker fuck her that night okay she was like you know he was up there seeing all the stuff that niggas do niggas be lying and shit and it's like i don't know what to do because i really do like him and all this i said bitch shut the fuck up that's what you do and let us go about our day okay um but the whole time uh carly red is talking about this thing with sierra and brosco Sean Garrett is sitting there looking fucked up, and he just over the whole thing. He was like, you need to mind your fucking business and stay out of these other people's business. I told you about this. You need to calm the fuck down. Quit turning the fuck up. I'm so tired of this man up here trying to talk to me like he my daddy, telling me what I need to do and all this stuff. It's not that he's trying. I don't feel like he's trying to control Carly. I don't feel like he's trying to talk to her like he a daddy or whatever. It's just that, bitch, at one point in time, you have to grow the fuck up and know how to fucking act, okay, in life. And she don't know. Excuse me. She don't know how to act. And I don't know if Sean Garrick didn't watch uh, a few seasons of Love and Hip Hop already. Because you acting like you didn't. You should have known this is how this bitch acting. and This is what you was taking on. I said, damn, bitch, you about to lose another man. Because next season, she going to have another man, okay? This is season seven. So from season one through seven, I'm pretty sure she'd had at least six to seven men, okay? No, I'm going to say five to six men she didn't had in seven seasons, Okay? Girl, it's a mess. It's a mess because you're about to lose this one because he was over it. Brasco, my friend, you know what I'm saying? That's my best friend. I'm not going to sit here and just let you talk about him or whatever. I'm going to be on his side because he's not here to present the facts. But the facts were this happened and this happened and all this stuff. I said, Sean, just get the fuck up out of there. You ain't built for this life, okay? You didn't talk to um Life Genius about this shit? Okay. Whoo, bitch. So the show come back on off commercial break like we ain't getting no music intro. We just see Rashida and them sitting down at this little table, whatever, at this little, you know, different area we ain't ever really seen before. Um, They running out of places to film because they always getting into some shit. And this is one of them, okay? This particular scene with um all the girls and shit, we, I'm, I'm going to get onto it in a second. Rashida, they waiting on Tommy to show up. We got Carly, we got Spice, we got Rashida. Uh, Estelita, Tommy shows up, um, all them or whatever. So they just waiting and shit. Erica Mina there. And I was like, hmm, so y'all invite Erica Mina of all people, but you ain't invite Sierra. But, you know, we already know they gonna be there. And Rashida is talking about 
she want to expand, you know, Houston, going to Houston and do the Galleria, putting press out there. She wanted to invite all the girls there. Spice, you know, she having an issue with um, Tommy and she let her frustration known just a little bit to the girls about how late Tommy been to the studio and how, um, you know, she needs to get in contact with the bitch because she trying to see when they going to um, do the album, the song release and the, um you know, party for it and all that stuff. Trying to set stuff up and include the bitch in it so you can't say that I wasn't included. Bitch, Tommy shows up and automatically you can tell Tommy is fucked up, okay? Tommy is fucked up and I don't believe that bitch was putting on. I believe the bitch was really just fucked up, drunk as shit, probably was on something else. You just never know because, baby... That little wine and shit, them little Moscato shit that y'all be drinking, that don't do shit to nobody. Well, unless you a fucking light drinker, that shit don't do nothing. And Tommy is a fucking pro, okay? Now, she was drinking on something hard before she came there and probably popped something else too. But um, for a bitch who claimed that she ain't got no drinking problem, this is why her and Spice got into it. Because Spice called her out on the shit. You know, you ain't got no drinking problem, but the courts put you on a fucking alcohol monitor um, you know, just to do, just because, just because, no, bitch, you got a fucking problem, okay, and you showing up, you just drinking everything, Rashida trying to give out her news or whatever, and she making all these faces, Spice bring up the pig shit, I said, okay, Spice, you know, chill out with that, because we already know that Tommy is irked, and I already can see where this is going, this, it's not, I don't think Spice was really trying to agitate the bitch, but the bitch was already agitated, Spice agitated, so therefore, it's just going to spill over. I'm thinking these two about to get into a fight, because I seen the preview from last week. I seen that, and I was like, oh my God, so Spice and Tommy about to hit it off, okay? No, no, that ain't what happened. They get into it a little bit, and... You know, because you was like, you're talking about a living thing. The pig is a living thing. You don't get no fuck. My pig had a heart attack and all this and whoop de woo And we sitting there like, you know, Rashida said, we're going to go to a dude ranch, put some Daisy Deuce on in the tank top, and we're going to be all to the good. Heidi, Heidi, ho, yippee ki yay, motherfuckers up in this bitch. And that went over everybody's head because Tommy is over here, bitch. Tommy bent over that table to uh, pour that drink. Eric Kamina, all up in her ass. Then when they was getting into it, she was like, Tommy, calm down because I want to uh, touch on your booty or flirt a little bit more. I said, I mean, I know she was trying to bring the situation back, but the producers, did you hear the producers say, so Tommy, tell them about Scrap. And that's when shit really started getting out of control, okay? That's where it went far left. And I was like, so y'all just put out there about the fact how y'all tried the producers behind the scene. They set up these scenes and tell them exactly what it is that they need to talk about and all that shit. This is not a real reality show. If you got to do all that and do, girl, fuck that. Can we just be organic with the shit? But we already knew that. So, you know, they just proved what we already knew. Anyway, Tommy said, yo, fuck scrap. I said, okay. What was all that for? I mean, it just came out. Well, fuck that nigga, okay? And you know that nigga over there, that bitch do you in my makeup stuff and you ain't do your hair and all that shit? Bitch, you better have that bitch looking like Michael motherfucking Joy. I said, what the hell is going on? Everybody is sitting there like, so who she talking to? What she talking about? Bitch, they was like, she was like, I know where you live at and I turn this whole thing down. Bitch, okay, the producers and everybody's getting into it. Like, okay, we know, Tommy, we filming, we filming and all this shit. Bitch, next thing you know, huh, Spice get back into it. And then they had to put up a screen saying in the midst of this where they was about to um, pull Tommy out. She gets into it with a producer and somebody else on the set. And they get into a physical and er a verbal confrontation, and they only had the audio. And I was just like, oh, my goodness. But you ain't got no drinking problem. But you ain't got no drinking problem. There's one thing to be drunk on occasion when you out socially or whatever. But, bitch, if you showing up to just a little simple thing and you have to have a drink every time, bitch, you got a fucking problem. Like, calm the fuck down, bitch. So, uh, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Bitch, get your shit together. <laughs> I am. <laughs> oh. Oh. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop fucking with y'all like that. Y'all like, bitch, what the fuck are you on? I'm half life, okay? Nothing but the grace of God, all right? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Anyway, so, um, you know, Jock, 
meet up with Sean and um who else? BK. So they talking about the whole thing that happened. Yo, you know, Sierra come up to my house and talking all this shit about me fucking around with Amber and fucking around with Joy. Jock like, yeah, Amber is a pretty piece to smash. I was like, we all in the comments. Let me just tell y'all how much I love us, okay? We didn't watch this show so many times. The whole time I'm reading my comments last week, we all was like, bitch, we done seen Amber before. I'm sitting here like, yo, I don't remember which episode. I said at first, I didn't remember exactly who I seen to with and where I seen to. But bitch, I said the bitch look familiar as fuck. I'm in the comments. Yeah, yep. Yeah, she looks familiar as fuck. I can't place it, but bitch, I seen her face. Everybody else like, look, bitch. She was in the seasons a few seasons ago fucking around with Jock and I had to go back and I was like, bitch, you fucking right. And then Jock just confirmed that shit. I was just like, bitch, this hoe get around. But okay, so I really don't think that she gonna, he's like, yeah, I smashed. Mind you, BK gonna say, I need to talk to Sean. He needs to get his chick on a leash. That ain't his chick, first of all, for right now. And probably 9 out of 10 never was. You know, Sean said he done with that. Carly Red and Young Jock needs to just go ahead and fuck around, okay? They just need to get back together. Um, that's the only pairing that actually made sense, okay? Um, you know, it, it eventually gonna do a 360. And right about now, Carly is at 240 degrees, okay? She almost back to Jock, okay? Give her a couple more seasons. Jock and her gonna be right back together at that 360 point, okay? For some of y'all that don't know, Geometry 360 is a circle, okay? You know, she's gonna go right back to the starting point. After she comes around, boop, right there. And so, you know, um, <clears throat> BK, you know, laying his ass off. Jock don't believe that shit. He was like, to hear him talk about something, he ain't fucking around with Amber, whatever, I don't believe you, okay? That's what it is. I don't believe you. I was like, at least you ain't dumb. But, you know, it is what it is with that front. Carly Red and this little photo shoot, I ain't even gonna fucking lie, okay? I don't know what they doing with the cinematography, you know, this season. But everything been on point. You know, they giving the girls photo shoots and shit when they scenes come on most of the time. Carly Red walked across that street. Now, see, bitch, if you wasn't such a messy bitch, I could really fuck with you because you are pretty as shit, okay? And you fucking did that walking across that street, looking at that car, which found out you was really looking at the camera, making sure they get your shot, and then you kept on fucking strolling. I was like, all right, bitch, but let's get to the bottom of this shit. You know, I just miss, it's been a few days ever since the whole friends eviction happened, and I miss my girl Sierra in Tokyo, you know what I'm saying? So I need to come down, and I need to do something to make this right, and I think I got everything that I need to make this right. So, she's sitting down with them, um, Tokyo and her feelings already, you can just see the same face, you know, she just wasn't here for everything that happened. Sierra wasn't here for it because, like I said, you should have just went on ahead and told her that in person, you know, at least... Not bring the bitches over there to the crib and be like, well, this bitch is fucking him. This bitch is fucking him. This is the proof. No, you should have at least been like, little bitch, heads up because I heard some stuff and I'm getting the information from this and this about them fucking around with Brasco. Now, Sierra's the type of bitch that ain't going to take the information whether you give it to her in public or if you give it to her in private. But, um... I do feel like Mimi wasn't needed. And to be quite honest, Tokyo wasn't needed. So, that's probably why she mad. But then, it flips because Tokyo, she finds out from Carly. You know, she trying to, they get back on a good foot for like two seconds. And Carly drops the bomb and was like, you know, um, in her way, she thinking that she trying to show amends by letting her know what's going on. Like, bitch, mind you, when we going through all this... Tobias come up in there with um Spice. She up there dating Spice. Mind you, Tokyo said Tobias still talking to her. Okay, so you know that's why she upset. She gonna cry in the car. She gonna just cry in her weave and all that stuff. It is what it is. Niggas ain't shit, but hoes and tricks and a piece of dick. You know, and um that she ain't hidden. You know, um so I would not be stressed out like this over a dick that I ain't even fuck yet. But anyway, you know, so that means I ain't stressed out over no dick. <laughs> no, no, stop playing with y'all. Anyway, um, when she said all that, she was like, you know what, Carly, I ain't got time for this because, you know, I feel like you ambushing me again. It's fucked up. And I was like, okay, now I can understand the ambush. See, Ever felt a little bit ambushed because all these motherfuckers didn't like she said, none of them hoes her friends or whatever. 
So, how do you feel ambushed when you having a girl chat with your friend, okay? And just like you was there with Sierra, Carly came to you and told you what it is. See, it's the difference. Because I know somebody going to be like, so what was the difference between that and what was the difference between it? It's a big-ass difference. She ain't got this whole, that whole spice there. She ain't got Mimi. She ain't got Erica. She ain't got Tommy and all them there to, you know, witness this shit. Bitch, I'm just sitting here like Tokyo calm the fuck down, okay? You just you just in your feelings because a nigga played your ass and that's it. Just like I think you look Grammy and all that shit. I was like, okay, girl. So Tokyo, she basically like you could have just went on ahead and called me. That's what Sierra's saying, you know, with the friend of and stuff that Carly could have called her or whatever. But like I said, Carly could have and should have did a one on one. But Sierra wasn't going to hear that shit right then and there either. She would have needed the proof and all that stuff. But you have to give a bitch a chance to say, give me the proof. But Tokyo, girl, calm your ass down. Uh, Carly and Tokyo, I mean, uh, Sierra make up. And, you know, Carly tell her about the fact that not only are the girls going down there to Houston, but Roscoe and Sean supposed to be coming or jocking them or whatever. They supposed to be coming. And so they got to figure out what's happening with that because all of a sudden Sierra want to make it seem as if, you know, bitch, I uh, I seen all the evidence and I took it in. I just went over there to his place just to see how he was going to act. And I knew that nigga was lying. I still fucked him anyway, but I knew that nigga was lying and I've been ghosting him ever since. And I was like, oh, okay, stop playing. So um, after that. We get the same with um just Britney. Just Britney, girl, I want you to change your hair color. Like it's it's uh, it's making you look like a cabbage pack kid. And I don't wanna say that because you know what I'm you know, I don't really like just Britney for certain reasons other than this outside the show. But on the show, she seems like the only one who got fucking sense, okay? How is that? One of the bitches that we really don't fuck with got sense, okay? Tierra brings her, I ain't got nobody, no business and no reason to be back on this show but to meddle in somebody else's business and play with their storyline because I ain't got one of my own. And so she over here, you know, so I heard this stuff that was going back on with my girl Jess. And so I had to come down here and talk to my girl Jess Brittany because, bitch, listen, you know, I'm going to have to make it so that Tierra and, um, I mean, so that Jasmine and uh, uh, Rashida can talk to each other because she doing her own little party in Houston. And she can't go nowhere from her listening party because she got to be that. She got to be that. I said, bitch, put your hands down. Okay. Calm the fuck down. Why is this so much of a concern to you? Oh, I like to do all this because I understand where Aunt uh, Jasmine is coming from because I am a single mother and all this stuff. And every kid de deserves their parents and all this shit. That is true. But see, Jasmine got herself in this situation. Jasmine and Kurt. Jasmine willingly fucked the married man just like that married man willingly fucked her. Okay? It is fucked up what he doing, but I feel no sympathy for her. I only feel for the child. But the way that you going about this, and I'm so glad just Brittany said, bitch... I don't really fuck or know the processes like that, but you know, Houston, my hometown, so I had to go down there. They went through my people and booked me to do their little uh, after show shit for her grand opening, so I said yes, because a gig is a gig is a gig, and so therefore, I'm down here on business. I ain't got time for this bullshit, because Tierra want to bring Jasmine down there, and I said, girl, get your ass fucked up, Tierra, okay? Bring Tommy down there just so that, you know, she can whoop that ass too, okay? Like, come on, you doing too fucking much, and even Brittany said, yeah, conversation needs to be had, but you can't force that shit. You got to um, give it time for that conversation to be had. I said, thank you, bitch. Tierra just don't understand. She bored. She bored. You got 15 goddamn kids at home. Why you ain't bring the nigga that you supposed to be fucking or who you married or whoever the fuck that drama happened? You could have had your own storyline with that, but you meddle into a bitch that we don't give a fuck storyline. Okay, tell myself, they all jumped on her and went, girl, bitch, we don't care about her. Nobody does. We don't care about her nor Kurt. Okay, shut the fuck up. So the girls are getting ready to go to Houston. Everybody getting all that shit together. Do you know... The one that took me out, bitch. First of all, Melissa, I know where you got your pants from, okay? Because I was looking at them too. Bitch, you a cheap bitch and I understand it, okay? But um, it is what it is. It ain't no shame, all right? You know, sometimes you, I know what it sells out too. Bitch, because I got some too. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. A bitch didn't lie some more way. A bitch is getting into smaller sizes, okay, bitch? I'm sitting here like... 
E, bitch, like all my shit, all my shit. I do that in another video. I had to put that out there, like, because I really feel lovely. I feel light and lovely. I'm, I'm still a big bitch, but I'm lighter than I used to be. So, you know, that's everything. But moving on from that, we working, and it's working. So, um, the one that had took me out was Sierra and her son. First of all, Shooter could not deny that little boy got the nose and eyes and everything. That little motherfucker came up in that room, put that suitcase on the bed like, God damn, mama, here, take your shit. Take these fucking shoes. He was over it, okay? But everybody go to the um, airport. Um, Tokyo is there. Sierra invited Tokyo. They get in the car. They all, uh, Rashida narrating about how everybody deserves this chance and they need to be, you know, cool and all this stuff and have some fun. They're just going to turn up or whatever. She worried about Tommy. Maybe everything could be cool. Maybe she needs this. They don't know what's going on because when they get on the bus, excuse me, mm, they know this Tommy ain't there. They trying to figure out whether or not Tommy's going to come. Spice is saying that, you know, she's really worried about her because she got potential. And that's what's fucking it up with her because she has so much potential and she just don't know what's going on with her. Okay, but that little conversation when they find out um, that Brasco coming and then um, <laughs> Sierra was like, I invited Tokyo. Spice said, why'd you invite her? She was like, I mean, because that's our friend. That's our friend. Spice in that confessional said, I don't give a damn about Tokyo, China, Japan. Bitch, the shit threw me. Okay, it, it, it made me fall out because earlier... Tokyo said, I don't give a fuck about spice, paprika, cayenne, whatever the fuck. That was hilarious to me for some reason. I don't know. But um, anyway, you know, they got to figure out how they do that. They get to the freaking, I guess, resort where they're supposed to be at the hotel or whatever. And Stephanie, who works on the show, she's there. And everybody's like, uh, the only reason why she here is when it's bad news. Come to find out it's some news about Tommy and her attacking security and, you know, the producers and shit like that. I was like, well, shit, we sh seen the shit coming. Discipline the hoe. So Tommy can't film with them for a minute until she get herself together, basically, because you can't attack the staff. You can't attack security and all that stuff. And, you know, she got some shit to figure out. We already seen this. And they took this opportunity just basically to... Oh, you know, I seen to pour this and do this. I said, come on now. We already knew this. Y'all seen what was going on. And none of y'all really stepped up and tried to talk to her, even if you knew that the bitch wasn't going to um, accept it. But, hey, it is what it is. To be quite honest, it ain't their problem. You know, but um, the only thing that really confused me is the fact that Estelita, her accent left in that last scene when she was talking. She was talking clear as fuck. I said, okay. But y'all tell me how y'all felt about this episode of Love and Hip Hop, and I will see you guys later. Peace.